Hi, let us understand how to start a Kubernetes cluster within Vulture Cloud. Once you sign up with Vulture Cloud within this particular website, vulture.com, you will be in a position to start an individual computer instance or the managed Kubernetes cluster. The advantage with the Vulture Cloud is the control plane is not chargeable. You will be paying only for the worker nodes that you are starting along with the cluster. Once you sign up and add the payment details, you will be in a position to see the Kubernetes option within products where you can start a cluster. Let me add a cluster, give a name to it. Let me say alpha and I can select the version and the region where the servers should get started. I'm going with the, the Bangalore or New York, New Jersey, any city we can go with. Let me give a name to the worker node group and number of worker nodes. I'm going to go with the regular cloud compute where I will be getting charged $10 per node. That's per month charge and per hour it's going to charge 0 0.03 dollar per hour per node and one more thing if you notice if you start with the uh, brazil where each node will be charging seven dollar here the memory will be only 1024 mb now with all these details that is the cluster name the version of the cluster location as brazil and uh, number of nodes give a name to the worker node group and select the type of worker instance it's going to give the approximate estimate per month let me say deploy now the cluster will get deployed and it is getting installed once the cluster is ready we can download the configuration file it's going to take a couple of minutes. I'll pause the video. We'll start after a few minutes. Now, if you check the status, the cluster is in the running state. We can click the cluster and check the details about the cluster. Number of CPU is 2. Total amount of RAM and how much getting charged as of now. The current status of it, IP address details. You will be seeing through these details later point of time and I can download the configuration file to connect with the cluster. So this is going to provide me a configuration file. Before getting in, let me explain how the infrastructure is set up. I started an alpha Kubernetes cluster within a Brazil location. And if I want to connect to this particular cluster from my system, I need to have the configuration file. This is what we downloaded. And this will be having the details about the certificates and the endpoint, IP address, all such details will be available. So this is the configuration details and it's going to have the certificate data and the key. This is going to act like a password. Please do not share it with anyone. I'm going to store it in a location where the dot cube 
config file available. This will be named as config or I have to explicitly provide which file is having the configuration file. By default, the client with which I'm going to use to connect to the Kubernetes cluster will be using this configuration file config from the location my user dot cube. And the client to connect with the cluster, I will be using something called kubectl. And this can be downloaded from the Kubernetes website. I can get into the tools here. I do have the kubectl. This is the command line tool or a client to connect with the Kubernetes cluster. I can download the version that I wanted. So it's going to download the version 1.28. Always it is recommended to have the client version plus or minus one what the server is running. Once this kubectl is installed or that exe is kept in a path within the Windows system, I can open the command prompt and check whether it is working. kubectl. So it's giving the options to work with kubectl. So the client version is 1.28 and I do have the server version that is 1.28.2. In case if I don't, in case if I don't have this particular configuration file, the server will not be connecting. So let's go ahead and test it out. So here it's giving clear error saying not able to connect to the server. So the configuration file will be having the server endpoints, certificate details, everything so that we can connect. So we are able to start a Kubernetes cluster within the virtual cloud and connect to that particular cloud using the configuration file provided by the virtual cloud. 